these are the 12 acrylic colours that I tend to use. So we start off with titanium white, lemon yellow, Naples yellow, cadmium orange, burnt sienna, burnt umber, raw umber, crimson, velvet purple, or any purple would do, ultramarine blue, carillion blue, a bright leaf green, and a darker hooker's green. All of those I'm using are System 3 acrylics um, with a slightly larger tube of white. And I also create myself, you can see in the background there, um, a colour palette of the colours I intend to use. Paint brushes. Here's a selection of paint brushes I use. I tend to use fairly cheap paint brushes, to be honest. Um, you can buy them in sets, and I like using these um, synthetic head brushes. I find for acrylic painting, they're strong and resilient, and um, they're quite easy to clean as well. And you notice I've gone for these sort of flat chisel shapes. I think I found over the years that style of paintbrush suits my style of painting. I think these ones on, on the right here, um, I just found um, in my local art store online and they were fairly cheap. And over the years I have treated myself to some more expensive um, Pro Art or De La Roni System 3 paint brushes which um, are also uh, designed for acrylic paint. They're a bit more expensive, but I, to be honest, I don't think they're that much better. Um, I found just using these uh, paint brushes on the right are great because when they wear out, um, you can obviously cheaply and easily replace them. So I would get myself um, a set of something like this when we're starting off. To we'll start off with a fairly large flat chisel brush and then a selection of sizes down to um, something quite small. But initially when we're starting off painting, um, it's a good idea to start with a large brush until we get a little bit more confident. Okay, so now the paint brushes I'll be using. Uh, next we'll go on to um, the palette. Okay, for painting in acrylics, um, I use these um, De La Rami Stay Wet Palettes. Um, they come in two sizes, one on the left is fairly large, one on the right is a much smaller size, which is probably fine um, if you're just starting off with acrylic painting. Uh, and the idea is that this really keeps the acrylic paint moist and wet, because acrylic paint is fairly fast drying, and in normal room temperature air, um, the paint would dry on your palette. So the idea of this is that, um, Obviously it comes with this um, palette, which is a deep box. And um, you also get um, this packet. And in the packet, there are three sheets of reservoir paper and 12 sheets of the permanent purple <laughs> membrane. Uh, and the idea is that um, we, we place uh, the reservoir in the palette and um, you can um, pour some water over that just to get it moist. It's a bit like blotting paper, and that holds the water. And then on top, you put the membrane. Okay, place the membrane. And then um, you can put your acrylics, um, squeeze out your acrylics into this palette. And when you finish painting for the day, um, to keep the uh, moisture in and to keep the acrylic paint nice and moist, you can just clip on the plastic lid. Um, I also tend to use this, I've got one of these sprays, a mister, um, that helps also I can spray that over the top of the uh, palette and help keep it nice and moist. Um, but you can also use um, something like this cheap uh, mister from, um, I think I bought this in the local chemist. 
and again you can just squeeze that over your palette now and again uh, while you're painting and that will help keep the uh, acrylic paints nice and moist. So that's a De, De La Rone, um, Stay Wet palette. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a bit about painting surfaces. Um, obviously, uh, you can paint on a number of surfaces with acrylic because the paint actually takes to most surfaces very well. So you can paint on canvas, uh, stretch canvas. You can paint on um, boards. You could paint directly onto a wood panel. But I um, just recently quite like this uh, acrylic paper. For several reasons um first of all it's quite cheap uh compared with canvases obviously and the boards um and um it's also something when you're first starting off with acrylics is um don't have that sort of fear of using up your materials uh i know most artists uh, me included when you first start you're always tentative about using your materials um you know, if you're using the expen relatively expensive canvas or a board, um, you're using up all that material. So painting surfaces. Um, I suggest that you get yourself um, this De La Rale acrylic paper. Um, the size of the pad I'm using here is A3 and it comes with um, 20 sheets, which is more than enough. Um, if you're not worried about the cost too much, I actually suggest getting two of these pads um, when you buy them. Um, and I'll explain why in a moment. Anyway, back to the um, the paper itself. Um, it has two sides. Uh, one side you can see here is textured uh, very much like a canvas. And the reverse side is much smoother. So... We normally, we normally paint on the um, textured side of the canvas and I found that this paper um, doesn't require any priming with gesso. It works quite well straight from the pad. Um, the reason I'm suggesting getting two pads is that um, you can use the reverse of one of the pads as your drawing board. Um, so this saves a bit of money on buying a, a um, wooden drawing board. What I do is um, on the reverse of the second pad I buy, um, turn the pad over and then put my piece of paper that I'm going to paint on on that board. And then I use um, low tack tape to stick the paper that I'm going to paint on to the reverse of the drawing pad. Now this tape, um, you can buy it in decorating stores. It's um, a very low tech tape. Uh, you can use ordinary masking tape, but I find that um, the masking tape, if you certainly if you're painting over a period of three or four days, um, the masking tape can stick quite hard to your paper and it can be a little bit difficult to remove. So this decorating tape, low tech tape, sometimes, um, it's blue material, but you'll find it in most DIY shops and good art supplies will also sell it to you. Um, and I stick that um, paper that I'm going to paint on to the back of the pad. Okay, so that's um, drawing surfaces and I recommend the De La Rowney System 3 acrylic paper, uh, 83 size. Okay, some of the other materials um, that I have um, to hand when I'm painting in acrylics are these uh, watercolour pencils. They are water soluble and I use those to put on the basic sketching or layout or sometimes when I'm using a grid um, to, on, on the canvas. Uh, it's, it's quite easy to use this material and then remove the material with a wet paintbrush. Uh, you could also use a standard HB pencil, of course, but um, that is waterproof. 
So any construction lines or grids that you may have in the background of your painting are a lot harder to remove. So yeah, small watercolour pencils, you only need a small selection uh, and like all art materials, um, sometimes the cheapest is best. There are some uh, fairly cheap brands around, so um, yeah, watercolour pencils. Painting mediums. Um, like all painting mediums, um, acrylic comes with a whole load of additional mediums that can be added to the acrylic paint to give different effects. Um, one on the left is a slow drying medium and then there's a couple of glazes on the right. Um, I'll be honest, I don't really use these. Um, you can if you want, it's a personal choice. But I just like to use the acrylic paint straight from the tube and just use a little bit of water uh, now and then to, to thin in the paint. So yeah, if you wanted to go ahead and buy some um, drying mediums or glazes, by all means go ahead. But I don't think they're um, essential. When using acrylic paints, it's quite important that we keep our paint brushes clean, especially at the end of the painting session. So you can buy a professional soap for, for artists. Um, it's, it's not bad, works quite well. Um, but um, I actually use um, this uh, ordinary household bar of soap because it's a fraction of the cost of the professional. Um, brush cleaner and it works just as well but it is important that we clean out our brushes after each session and you notice with this brush that the um, the paint actually on the handle has started to crack that can be quite annoying and that happens if we keep our brain brushes um, wet or leave them in the jar so I also think um, best practice is to uh, dry your brushes also thoroughly at the end clean and dry your brushes at the end of each painting session Now, if we're going to be painting in the evenings or in artificial light, you may want to consider purchasing either a daylight bulb or um, a daylight task light. Um, the one I've got there on the right um, is a little bit flash, but yeah, the idea of these is to make sure that we're painting it in the right warmth of light. Um, a normal light bulb is actually quite warm in colour, very yellow in colour, and that can affect um, your, your choice of colour and the end result of your painting. So I like to paint under a daylight bulb. Um, you can buy the bulb separately uh, with the normal sort of light fittings. Here's one here, and this will help immensely. So yeah, it's optional, but um, I'd recommend if you can stretching to um, buy yourself a daylight bulb uh, with the right sort of light fitting, obviously for your task light when working in the evenings in artificial light. Easels and drawing stands. I think it's important to make sure that you're comfortable and your posture is good when you're uh, painting. Um, so I tend to, rather than paint on um, a flat surface such as the desk here, um, I tend to use this uh, fold up small easel, desktop easel. Um, it's a good piece of kit, it shouldn't be too expensive. Um, you can fold it down and have different angles. Um, and you can obviously place your painting surface onto um, this easel on the desktop and then paint 
uh, at this sort of angle it's it's much better than leaning over uh, you can also paint sort of sling down using these uh, desktop easels so yeah uh, another piece of kit worth considering when you're starting off um, is a desktop easel Well, I hope you found this video on basic acrylic materials um, useful. Um, I think we are now ready to start painting. Good luck. <laughs>